Welcome to this week's episode of Talk of the Town. My name's Philip Swicegood, and I am back with my good friend and co-host, Dr. Kenneth Harper from Vein Specialist of the South. Now, if you have questions about your, your veins, maybe you saw a new vein pop up and you just want to have a professional take a look at it, give Dr. Harper and my friends at Vein Specialist of the South a call and they'll get you the answers that you deserve. We also want to thank this week's presenting sponsor, which is Piedmont Macon. Piedmont provides comprehensive quality health care for all of your medical needs. Thanks so much to Piedmont for investing in Central Georgia and making a show like this possible. If you're one of our brand new viewers on 13 WMAZ, waking up on a Saturday morning, drinking that first cup of coffee and wondering, what in the world is talk of the town? Here's what you can expect week in and week out. A conversation between me, Dr. Harper, and someone or multiple people in the community who are making a difference or doing something that you need to know about. This week is no exception because we are here with Kyler Mosley and Brian Bensel from the GABA Festival to tell you all the details and why you should mark this weekend off in your calendar. Brian, Kyler, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to, glad to be here. Thanks all right, for so having the, us. So the burning question, tell us all about the GABA Festival, Brian. Tell us what it is and why we should care about it. Uh, well, GABA Festival is the uh, Georgia Allman Brothers Band Association annual festival. It's uh, four days of mm -hmm. music dedicated to the Allman Brothers Band and offshoots of that band. And it's just a good weekend of fellowship, live music, and a lot of different events that anybody can go to. Cool. How many people use, have attended last year? And what are you expecting this year? Well, I think we had over 400 people attend last year. I think this year we're going to hopefully get something a little bit better okay, or higher. Cool. We want higher numbers. So we'd like for y'all to come out, support the right. Fest. So. And so where's it going to be at? Um, well, we're in different, we're in multiple locations. Um, we're we're going to, the show, the festival really starts on Thursday. We have what's called the annual uh, GABA Members Showcase hosted by a band called Idle Wild South. And what that is, is member musicians in GABA actually have an opportunity to get up on stage and play, mm -hmm. which is one of the things that really makes GABA unique. And it's hosted by a band called Idle Wild South. It's, a, it's an evening of music. It's at the... Uh, Capitol Theater in Macon. Tickets are $15. And what you're going to kind of see is there's going to be four sets of music, three sets of member musicians, and then Idle Wild South will follow up with that. Prior to that, there's going to be a meet and greet at Fresh Produce Records with Neil Lucas and the band Otis, who are actually going to participate in the showcase that night, sitting in with a couple of the different groups. Friday, we have another meet and greet at Fresh Produce Records with Lizella Rain and Tony Tyler who are going to be doing an after party later that night or during that weekend. Friday night show is actually, we're really excited about it. It's going to be a uh, Neil Lucas trio and Eddie Ninevolt. Eddie Ninevolt is an up and coming musician who's from Georgia. And actually he recorded his number one blues album right here in Capricorn featuring a ga lifetime GABA member named Dustin McCook. Saturday night mm -hmm. show is going to be a uh, Joanna Connor, who's a, 30 year experienced blues musician who is an amazing, talented singer and songwriter. Saturday's headliner, we're really excited about, is Sonny Landreth. He's uh, one of those guitar players that you need to hear. He's been playing for over 50 years. He's got a very unique slide style because he's from Louisiana. And he's kind of got like a, they call him, it's called Slidico, which is a little bit of Zydeco influence with his slide playing. And this is a really big deal because this is the first time he's ever played in Macon. Wow. And he's one of those guitarists that you hear about. Eric Clapton called him the best guitar player that you've never heard of. Wow. That's high praise. Right. Yeah. And he's one wow. of those those people yeah. you, you need to hear. He's coming to Macon. This is the first time in yeah. Macon, and it's going to be a really good time. That's pretty cool. So it starts Thursday, mm -hmm. Friday, and Saturday. And then Sunday, we have another event at the Big House on the Lawn. Uh, featuring a band called Smokestack and another band of local musicians called Lizella Rain. Right. Another event we're having is Saturday afternoon at the Big House. It's the uh, Members Jam, which is kind of one of the things that really makes Gabba unique. Right. Um, it's hosted by a band called Smokestack from Florida. They have a very talented group of musicians. They're going to play for a little bit, and then they're going to turn it loose to the members. And then it's just, mm -hmm. if you play guitar, you play bass, you play drums, you play keys, you can sing. Mm -hmm. You, can, you have an opportunity to get up and play that that music 
at the big house with some very talented and unique musicians that you probably get to see maybe on stage, but you have an opportunity to play along with them as well. Yeah. The only the only thing you really need to do is to be, participate in the Members Jam is become a Gamba member. You can sign up that day. You can sign up online. You can become a lifetime member. We have multiple opportunities. So if you're a guitarist, you want to come into the big house on Saturday for $20, you can get an annual membership and get a chance to go up and play with some of the, probably the best local musicians, mm -hmm. regional musicians, musicians across the country. Do you really have to be able to play an instrument to be a member? No, no, okay. no. All right. Just a jam. All right. Just to participate. <laughs> yeah. Have you, is, this not, is this new where the a chance to any the members to play, or is that something you've done before? This has been going on since I've been involved yeah. in the organization. So, so. be tr truthful now. Has anybody ever gotten up there and they were pretty bad? Well, we got a few here and there. We <laughs> lim <laughs> limit, <laughs> limit <laughs> their... Uh, li they're just passionate about it. If you can hit a tambourine on beat, yeah. push yeah, out there. That's cool. That might, that, might yeah, that might be my calling. That might be my calling. I there you go. that if you go. <laughs> okay. you go. But I mean, considering the people that are coming from around the country and around the world, there's been some extremely talented musicians get up and participate. Yes, there as have. As well as the artists themselves occasionally that we have as headliners showing up to jam right. in the backyard at the big house as well. Now, Kyler, you, are you one of the original members of the, the founding members? All right. And some people may not know what GABA really stands for. Could you tell the them what? Georgia Allman Brothers Band Association. Um, we basically started as a bunch of fans and tape collectors got together. Um, a gentleman by the name of Tom Holloway out of Chattanooga ran an ad in the paper, Telegraph, years ago in 91, and everybody got together at the old Hilton, and a bunch of us had known each other. But um, we had so many people there that day, kind of put a light bulb in everybody's head, we need to get together and make something serious right. with this. Because at that point, the Allman Brothers were back together, they were out touring, mm -hmm. making new records. Um, so we decided to become an organization. Okay. And we put it together with the idea of maintaining and continuing the legacy of the, the brotherhood and brothers and sisters type thing that the Allman Brothers had started mm -hmm. you know, back in the 70s and, and to, to do things to benefit right. the community as well. Yeah. Um, which, you know, over the years, we're pretty proud of what we've accomplished you know in that regard um you know adopt a spot at rose hill cleaning up the cemetery there um, we've planted trees in the, in the in the cemetery in memory of band members and and road crew members and other people associated with with gavel we did the, the only living members that we've done were mama louise and mama hill when they were alive right. mm. um, we wanted to give them their roses so to speak right while they were still here with us. Of course, you know, we've made other donations to, to quite a few organizations. Yeah, did you, you grew up in Macon or, or around? I'm, I'm from Los Angeles. So Georgia. when was the first, how old were you when you first heard about these crazy hippie guys who came well, to Macon? the hippies Macon? in the woods, I was, I was 10 years old. You so. were 10 years old. Yeah. We don't want to tell them how old you are, but so, when did they come? They, they figure out, they figured, was they it 69. 69. 69. So. Tell us what, tell us about that. Well, um. My parents and my grandparents' property was basically across the road from Ottawa South. And mm -hmm. when the Allman Brothers were out there living in Lysol at that point, they, they'd crank up playing and I could stand out in my yard and hear them like I was listening to the stereo. And um, the girl that lived across the road from me, she had the first two Allman Brothers albums. And I didn't really know much about them at that point, but she's like, well, yeah, that's that's the Allman Brothers band, so I've, I've, I've been a fan ever since. And so did you have your buddies coming over to the house to sneak and listen a little bit? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> anybody that lived at Lysula at that point, they were so loud, you couldn't help but <laughs> Everybody knew them, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, everybody knew about right. the hippies in the woods. So, <laughs> so, right. so Gabba started in 1991? 92, actually, 92. officially okay, in 92. So 20, uh, so 32 years. 32 now. years. And we've had music every year but one, and that's because of COVID. COVID, right. that's right. <laughs> is this, is we're this... proud of the folks we brought to town musically, too, because we've had some tremendous right. talent. Right. And, and, you know, we're known as a music town, and part of the reason is because of 
groups like you. Obviously, the Almond Brothers Band mm -hmm. coming here too. Ryan, and talk to us about your appeal to uh, the Almond Brothers Band. What first got you like hooked to um, them? I had a, I, I'm not from Macon. I'm from Pennsylvania. I had an uncle who, when I was growing up, would just give me a stack of records every weekend and say, "Go listen to these," and then we trade them out. And one of them I just kept holding on to was Fillmore East. And then uh, when I had an opportunity to move to Macon, I was like, cool, I'm actually going to get into this now and kind of dig around and see what's here. And I know, like Kyler said, there's a rich musical history in Macon mm -hmm. and there's there's something special here. And I kind of like being a part of it, being involved in this organization mm -hmm. and and just really listening to the whole catalog of what the Allman Brothers accomplished, you know, mm -hmm. over 50 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it's only appropriate. I think we all have to go around and say what our favorite Allman Brothers song is. Mm -hmm. And I will gladly start. And it's because I'm married to a Jessica. My favorite Allman Brothers song has to be Jessica. Understandable. So. Am I putting you on the spot? I, well, <laughs> what, the Elizabeth Reed. Song. Well, well, see, me and you are. Yeah. I don't want to shake your hand. That, that's my favorite piece of music in the world. So, so and Blue yeah. Sky after that, I guess. Okay. Cool. So, do you know the story about why it was the name of Elizabeth III? Yes. Elizabeth Don't Elizabeth. share it now, but we want to hear what his oh, is. No. But maybe, maybe we'll go to that. We'll maybe come we, out of that. Maybe That's we a teaser. Eat a pizza. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I always find it a loaded question, but I have to say, Hot Land is in my top. One of my favorites. Right. There's just right. something about that, the improvisation. I really enjoy the, I really like the instrumentals huh. on a lot of the albums because it gives them a little space to breathe and explore and. You yeah. know, even some of like the deeper cuts on some of the albums that not everybody mm -hmm. knows. There's a instrumental called "From the Madness of the West" on the "Reach for the Sky" album. Yeah. That is amazing. You give that a listen. Right. Wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. we want to ask you a few more questions, but first we have to take a break for our sponsor. Back several years ago, I had varicose veins, and I had the type veins that were big and distended. Being a firefighter is physically demanding. When you're at a working fire, you're on your feet for several hours. You are constantly getting up and down. When you're actually fighting fire, you're crawling around inside of a structure. And it does have a bearing on your legs, just your, your whole body. And that added to my problem. That's when I came to see Dr. Harper at Vein Specialist of the South. He actually corrected the problem and he removed the diseased veins. It was outpatient. I was awake during the whole time, and it was really quite pleasant. He put on some of my favorite music, I kicked back, I let him do his thing, and the results were absolutely amazing. I was feeling a lot better. By my experience, Dr. Harper is a true pioneer in his field, and we're blessed to have him right here in Middle Georgia. If you are having a similar issue, call Vein Specialist of the South today. Piedmont Macon is proud to be your partner in healthcare, in business and in the community. From our two convenient hospitals and ERs, our cardiac program, women's services, and urgent care centers, we provide Middle Georgians with comprehensive care close to home. Our goal is to empower you through great care that's simplified, unified, and easier than ever to access. Our mission is to make a positive difference in every life we touch. We want to be part of your family and your life and to make our community a better place to live. Ratfield Tire Master, we're more than a tire dealer. We're your complete auto service center. So it doesn't matter if it's a brake job, alignment, or radiator service, we stand behind our work. Plus, we offer a multi-point vehicle inspection that's absolutely free. We know it's not just about getting from one location to the next. It's about driving with confidence. And at Raphael Tire Master, we're here to help. Visit one of our six Raphael Tire Master locations and log on to RaphaelTire.com for more money-saving coupons. We're back with the Medical Minute, where I ask Dr. Harper your vein care questions. Dr. Harper, this week's question that we're getting from a ton of people is, what is the recovery time for the average vein procedure? Well, you know, we, we try to design a procedure that meets, meets the patient's needs. And so sometimes it can vary uh, according to how severe their problem is. But we'd like to say that we do walk-in, walk-out procedures with little, little to no downtime. and Typically, uh, you'll go home, you rest for the first day or so, you're up and around, you're moving and walking, uh, you're back to most activities when a few days. If you like to run, lift weights, swim, usually say about a week or so, but and very little discomfort. Most people take a Tylenol for a day or two, and, and that's about it. So 
that's encouraging for folks. Occasionally you have people that wait a long time before they come and their, their uh, necessary treatment might be a little more involved, but if you come, come early, get your veins taken care of, you expect to have a quick recovery and be back to life as you uh, love to live it, but better, uh, pretty quick. So minimal recovery for procedures at Vein Specialist of the South. So if you have questions about your veins, give my friends at Vein Specialist of the South a call and they'll get you the answers that you deserve. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. This is a show with me and Dr. Harper where we interview people all across Central Georgia about stuff that you need to know about. This week is no exception because we are here with Brian and Kyler who are telling us all about the GABA Fest. But Brian, first, I wanna talk about the Allman Brothers and who they were as a band. So what I want you to do is I want you to tell us a little bit about the Allman Brothers band, but then also if someone is just getting into the band for the first time, what are some of the tracks and songs that they should be looking at? Well, ultimately the original lineup was all the vision of Dwayne Allman. And he had toured a little bit and kind of put this group of musicians together and he had something in his mind, he couldn't really put it together and then he started meeting the right people, Butch Trucks, brought in JMO, Barry Oakley, Dickie Betts, and then he reached out for his brother, Greg, because he his brother was the only one in his mind that said he could lead this band and sing for this band and play the organ. Um, as for like discovering the band, I would say start with the first album and work your way up. And That's about what year was that? 1969 is okay. when that all started. Which um, was the first one? 1969. That, what was the name of the album? Uh, the Allman Brothers Band. Allman. Yeah. Hmm. The photo shoot was done at the, um, the what, what I know is the Bill or Bell House right. on College Street. That now the Duffy Strings. The, the, the Duffy Strings building now. So. And then but, probably one of the most iconic pictures of the band that was taken over at the Bond Monument. Yeah. With over at Rose Rose Hill 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 Cemetery. So. Yeah. yeah. I would say if you're going to listen to it, I would say start with that and work your way up. Um, because you're going to start with the first album, then you're going to listen to Idle Wild South, right. then you're going to listen to Fillmore East, then you're going to listen to Eat a Peach, then you're going to get into Brothers and Sisters, and sky's the limit after that. Right. And then once you kind of get hooked on it, you need to sign up for the Rock Candy Tours and you know learn about some crazy inside stories that they exactly. share on those things, tours. Things that are probably not so. good for TV right now. <laughs> <laughs> which is not only the, which, the all my brothers, some, but other music. And some of, some of the historical markers you'll see around town, we had a hand in helping get those done as right. well. And the one down at the Byron Pop Festival site, we worked with the Smithsonian to get that accomplished as well. So. Right. So people may not know about the Byron Pop. Just a 30 second. How many people came and it was legendary, right? We're reportedly between 200 and 300,000. The largest crowd that Jimi Hendrix played for ever. And the Almond Brothers opened and closed that July 4th weekend right. in 19. Have, having practiced in Macon for a good while, I have a lot of stories that patients told me about things that happened with their granddad missing for a while, you know, and stuff like that. And they had to go find him or whatever, but that's for another, that's for another <laughs> recording. <laughs> so, you know, when we think about Almer Brothers, uh, and of course, Rose Hill, the resting place for a number of members of the band, we also think about them paying homage to Macon and what it brought to Macon, but there's the big house and, you know, people know about the big house and people know about Gabba Fest, mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit about how the uh, that you guys, GABA, have been instrumental in helping there from the get the beginning of restoration of that uh, well, the big house. When Kurt West and Kirsten decided to move down from Chicago after they purchased the house with the intentions of restoring it, and you know, in, they intended on doing a bed and breakfast there, and that fell through. But when the moving van showed up in Macon myself and other board members were there to help them load their furniture and stuff all the way to the third floor with some of it. So that's kind of how we got started with, with them, you know, moving in there. Um, of course, in the course of them living there and the museum coming into being, we've had members do plumbing, electrical, HVAC work there, lay down sod in the yard, you name it. We've actually done physical volunteer labor there as well. So 
We so, feel like we've had a hand in it from the get go. The labor and, of love, right? And labor of love. Right. And they support us and we support them and our endeavors, even though we want it made very clear that we are two legally separate entities. So folks right. get us confused. Yeah, so. that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about it. So people, because yeah. those are the two things that we hear about in making, if you're a new to community, yeah. you might not. You know, we do know. work together to, to accomplish things. And right. of course, you know, they, they work with us as part of the Gabba weekend with our right. members jam and our, right. what we call the hangover on Sunday with music in the backyard, both of those days. Good. And I know they benefit from us financially as well as all the hotels and restaurants yeah. in Macon during yeah. that weekend. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the board of the organization. Well, we're all volunteers. Um, we, I think the thing that brings us to the board is we all have a passion for this music. Right. And it's not work in any way, shape, or form. It's a labor of love. It's something we enjoy doing. It's something we like doing. It's something we want to make as big as possible. Do you see the like the next generation come along and wanting to jump in there? Uh, you can't be uh, you, young and you can't be too young right, to get absolutely. involved, right? Right, right. There's there's opportunities if you want to participate at an early age. Absolutely. Right. We've got a couple, but we're eager to have more. Yes, good. Oh. Should. Brian, I'm curious. You know, with Macon's rich musical history, with all of these new bands and new and new players coming in, what what is it that that like gives you hope about the future musically for Macon? I think Macon right now is in a really good spot for growth musically. There's a lot of local bands who are up and coming and a lot of musicians who are local who are up and coming and contributing to this new culture that we have going on in the Macon music scene. Mm. And a lot of those roots go back to being a fan of the Allman Brothers. The talent's here. Mm -hmm. The talent's here. And we try to uh, expose that talent to these people that are coming from other states and around the world. And again, I'm proud of the, you know, people that we've brought in from, from around the world. Right. And it's pretty amazing to meet people from Australia, Japan, Belgium, England, Wales, Germany, right. so Sweden, Finland. You know, our favorite song was about Elizabeth Reed. Yeah. So I asked you earlier, and it was kind of a tease, but there's some legends or rumors about that song. You want to tell what you've heard? Well, when the Allman Brothers were living in the house on College Street, they often wandered down to Rose Hill Cemetery. And there was a grave there for Elizabeth Reed Napier. Dickie Betts, who composed the great piece of music that it is, was um, reportedly having an affair with Bob Skaggs's then girlfriend. She was a very attractive Latin lady. Um, God rest her soul, because I think she's passed away to my understanding now, but um, Dickie as well. But um, he wanted to write a piece of music, you know, for her. You know, it was a very Latin piece of music, and but in line with that grave site there, he used Elizabeth Reed's name for that piece of music, right. and that's the rumor. He never denied it. But he, he never really <laughs> right. confirmed it either. So. See, right. it's this inside scoop that right. people aren't going to get right. if they don't go to the gathering. And for only 15 right. bucks, I or, mean, you can learn stuff like this for an entire right. weekend. Right. Now, what about, was it the Bond Monument? Yes. What, what's the story behind that? Well, and it's my understanding the, the, the original lineup would just go to Rose Hill Cemetery because it was quiet and they could sit and write music and practice music and everything, and, you know. It's a cemetery. People go around and explore and everything. And there's this, the Bond Monument, there's a cutout in the back where they, where Barry Oakley famously stood with his arms out for the back cover picture for the first album. So it's it's really nice to kind of go see that historical stuff. Same with the Little Martha statue yeah. too, which is the only really credited song that Dwayne Allman really ever composed. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of history with the Allman Brothers and Rose Hill Cemetery as well. Well, and part of the Bond thing is Barry Oakley and Dickie Betts had also been in a band called The Second Coming. And if you look at pictures of Barry Oakley and pictures of what people purport Jesus to have looked like, that's the, the resemblance and right. him holding his arms out. And, and they did consider the music and their collective to be almost a religious type experience 
and they wanted to share the, the brotherhood and you know um Dwayne was asked about you know when all the turmoil was going on with Vietnam and the, you know in 69 and 70 whether we were going to have a you know what he was going to do for the revolution well Dwayne's response was we don't need to have a revolution we have, need to have an evolution of people learning to get along with each other better right. now he was going home and eat a peach for peace was what he was going to do right. so. so we need that today don't we right. yes very right. much so we need that today absolutely so as we're moving towards wrapping up brian one more time give us the details of the gaba fest and why people should come okay um the event runs from september 26th through september 29th we have we have opportunities to check out live music every night we have a member showcase at the capitol theater on thursday night on friday night at the grand opera house we have eddie ninevolt and the neil lucas trio on saturday night at the grand opera house we have Joanna Connor and Sonny Landreth. We also have a meet and greet with uh, at Fresh Produce Records on Thursday night and Friday night with uh, members of Lizella Rain, members of Otis, and members of Tony Tyler's band. Tony, band Tyler, Tony Tyler's band and Neil Lucas. And Neil Lucas on the meet and greet. There's also breach. a mixer at Gallery West on Thursday and Friday afternoon, and then Saturday is the Big House. We're having the members jam at the Big House. And then Sunday, we're having the what we call the hangover jam at the big house. And the nice thing about the big house events is those are free. It's mm, perfect. Bring your chairs and coolers. But you have Chair. to uh, join on the, to be there for the members. To play. To play. Yeah. Which is $20, right? To play, right. yeah. And yeah. You, I don't think we've ever turned anybody away. So is there, is there a tie-dye shirt for every, every uh, fest? We wish they were all tie dyed. Do you have do you have one of the shirts today to show but, us? But they're not, but um, I mean, we, I mean, this was several years ago. I mean, okay, we we do try to do nice artwork and the yeah, information. That's cool. Back, so um, I have the uh, if you become a lifetime member, you get this nice Gabba lifetime member shirt. Yeah, so that's cool. Fantastic. All right, so if you like premium music, September twenty sixth to September 29th is the weekend for you. Go to GabbaFest.org and you can learn everything that you need to for this incredible local festival that we have here in Central Georgia. Tyler, Brian, thank you guys so much for joining us this week. Thank you all for having us. Yes. And thank you guys for tuning in and stay tuned for where me and Dr. Harper might show up next because you never know where it might be. Y'all come.